Okay, this is part three of the May 2024 Unit 4 IAL Edexcel Physics exam, um, which covers further mechanics, field theory, and particle physics. Question 13, we went through questions 11 and 12 in part two, did multiple choice in part one. If you watch them, that's great. Thank you for watching them. Uh, make sure you share them with your friends and um, subscribe so you know when the future video is done. So I'm doing short videos because I'm in the middle of doing other things in between. So question 13 is about circular motion. Student investigated forces involved in circular motion using a coin placed on a plastic disc. So the plastic disc is shown in the diagram as the boulder line. The mass of the coin was 8.8 .8 grams. Uh, you'll need that for your calculation. The diameter of the disc was 30 centimeters. And um, so that's D equals 0 0.030 meters. The student determined the maximum frictional force between the coin and the disc by tilting the disc as shown. The edge was raised by 6.3 centimeters and before the coin started to slide. So if it went to 6.31, it would slide down the disc. So that's where he's managed to get it to be balanced by the frictional force. Okay, you've got to show that, yeah? So show that means you've got to prove it mathematically that the frictional force is about 0 0.02 newtons. Again, when they show that, they just want you to get the roundabout to one significant figures. Now, sine theta is this distance divided by this distance, which is 0 0.03 um, uh, meters, but you can leave them both in centimeters as the ratio would be the same. Sine theta would be 0.21. They haven't in the mark scheme worked out what that is as an angle. You don't need it because at that angle, the frictional force will be the component of the weight down the slope, which will be mg sine theta. That's the component of the weight down the slope. So the friction, yeah, will be this way. That will be equal to mg sine theta pulling it or trying to put it down the slope. So if you equate those two forces, because we got a balanced force situation, is before the uh, frictional force is overcome. You put in mg, this is mg, multiply it by sine theta, which we've worked out as 0.21. So that's why they didn't bother to work out the angle, because it would save you time if you uh, don't do that. If you're two significant figures, that gives you a value of 0 0.018, which is approximately 0 0.029, as required for the exam for the question that you've proven it. The ticks are where you get the marks for this question. Part A. Part B, the student then placed the disc on a horizontal turntable. Yeah. So it's basically an old LP. Yes. As they were always um, 30 centimeters in diameter or about 12 inches. The disc rotated at 45 revolutions per minute. That means it does 45 complete cycles. That means two pi radians in 60 seconds, minutes into seconds. And to change that, that's how you work out the angular velocity. There'll be 45 rotations. Each rotation is two pi radians. So you get 4.71 radians per second to three significant figures. Yeah. I would leave it as three significant figures for now because you may need it for the next part. So once we know that, it says when the student placed the coin near the center of the disc, yeah, the coin remained in position and rotated with the disc. Yeah. When the student placed the coin at the edge, the coin slid off. And that's because obviously at the edge it's um, moving at a greater speed, linear speed, okay? Remember V, linear speed, will be equal to the distance from the center times the angular velocity. Now the angular velocity we worked out, but the velocity will, the linear speed will increase the further it is from the center of the disk. Hope that makes you understand the question better. The student estimated that the closer 
the closest the coin could be to the edge, the closest it could be to the edge, was about five centimeters. Now remember, it's the di diameter of the disc is uh, 30 centimeters, so the radius will be 15 centimeters. Okay, so we know the radius is about six, uh, 15 centimeters. Deduce whether this uh, is a, was a suitable estimate made by the student. You should assume that the maximum frictional force is 0 0.02 newtons, which we showed in part A of the question. So they want you to use the, the um, rounded up figure to one significant figures. So we're going to use F equals MR omega squared. Yeah. And we're going to use where the R, 5 centimeters from the edge, is 10 centimeters away because it's um, the radius is 15 centimeters. So R in this equation is where it's 10 centimeters from the center. So we want to find R for this maximum force. Okay, so I'm going to show that, or we're going to try to show that R is approximately equal to 10 centimeters. Now, we know that the frictional force is 0 0.02 newtons. Yeah, that's what they told us to do. So we're going to put in 0 0.02 newtons for the force. We know that the mass from part A was 8.8 .8 grams, and we know that the rotation speed to three significant figures we calculate is 4.71. If you put those in, you'll see that it comes up to 10.2 centimeters um, to th uh, three significant figures. So that uh, is a good estimate. So the coin can be placed about 4.8 centimeters from the edge, which is approximately five centimeters. So you would say um, it is a suitable estimate. You should say that. I haven't done that. You need to do that. Okay. And that's uh, question 13 done. I'm not going to go through question 14 because it's a completely different topic. So I'm going to stop the video there. Question 14 is about quarks and leptons. And I'd like to do that as a separate video because it's a multi-part question again. So if you found that useful, like, share uh, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. Hopefully see you in the next part. Bye for now.